All right, what's going on guys? Kosho here at the Lion's Den. And if you guys didn't watch uh, the Arnold Sports Festival that was going on all weekend, I would make sure you guys check that out. It's one of the biggest sports uh, events, you know, probably of the year, every single year. Uh, I, I've gone in the past, it's just awesome. So add it to your bucket list if you haven't gone. Uh, for me, it's like a one-time only type deal, although now I feel like I have to go more because I know more and more people there. Uh, but it is a spectacle nonetheless. And one of the biggest parts about it is the strongman competition, right, where we have a bunch of world's strongest man competitors battle it out uh, to win the Arnold Classic. So uh, I just want to talk about something that I saw, uh, specifically having to do with the circus dumbbell event. Now, you're probably like, who am I, right? Uh, I'm a nobody, I'll be straight up. But I do like strongman, actually I love strongman, and I compete at a fairly decently high level with it, and the circus dumbbell is something that uh, I love doing and I'm pretty proficient at. Uh, and by no means am I discrediting any of these big guys and their achievements or their talent or anything, um, but for a viewer watching who's trying to get in practice on their own, uh, just something that I saw from a technical standpoint is what we're gonna talk about today. Now I have made a whole video on the circus dumbbell, which you guys can click right here going step by step. So I'm not gonna cover all the basics of it, but I just wanna talk about one component that I felt like I saw a lot of guys making uh, their mistake or error on that was preventing them from getting the reps, okay? And what that was, was not getting that circus dumbbell stacked over midline when they're pressing. First oh. rep, wasn't able to stabilize it, but does keep it on the shoulder. He was explosive, but he pushed away from his body and couldn't keep it locked out of head. Again, there, he's extending the elbow, but it's coming away from, away towards the side. He needs to be more over his center line. And he can't fix it. It's his he's first got... attempt in that 90-second window, and he's unable to get that. That's worrying. Right back to work. Stoltman now looking like he's having the same problem as Trey Mitchell had. Yeah. A lot of them were pressing out, and they weren't pressing to have a really good uh, leverage and be as strong as possible, stacking over bone-on-bone -bone structure. So what I was seeing, right, is when they were pressing, they were dipping and pressing out this way, okay? That's gonna be really tough because we're putting a lot of pressure on our shoulder joint and we have nothing underneath there to really support ourselves, okay? So what I would like to see is when we're dipping, instead of pressing out, we're gonna press straight over top of our head. So from here, right up and over, because what we do is we have wrists stacked over elbow, elbow over shoulder, shoulder is gonna go over midline into our hips. So I'm a lot more likely to be able to hold this dumbbell overhead in this position a lot longer than if I start moving it out off of my body. Needs to be methodical, focus on one rep at a time, and that's exactly what he'll do. One rep, good for Leeds. He's not gonna rush between, he's gonna make sure of every rep. Second attempt. Look how high he gets it sat. Second attempt is good. So if you can tidy that up, right, it's gonna make it such a more efficient and set you up for success of getting more reps and also saving a lot of energy, okay? The other thing that I saw, um, and I don't understand, I guess, at this point, why when we know about jerk variations who are using a double knee dip, that we don't use this in our pressing when all presses are allowed in strongman. Typically, a lot of them, besides a few uh, people like Kearney and uh, uh, Martins, they leverage, and, and Novikov, they leverage using the jerk variations but a lot of guys still do push pressing. And when it comes to putting the max amount of weight overhead, I would obviously go for a jerk variation because it's gonna be the fastest, it's gonna be uh, the most efficient, and it's gonna save us a ton of energy overall. The crowd definitely behind this man. Alexei Novikov, time has started. Quickly to the shoulder, first rep is good. And he'll get right back to work. Look how efficient he is. The leg power, the speed, he's not, Pressing the weight out, he's exploding into the dumbbell, punching it overhead. We are only 20 seconds in, and Alexei Novikov has already tied for the lead in this event. Here's his fourth attempt. This is so and he is your new leader. Still has a minute to go. Wow. 
And that's five! <laughs> well, I said six. He could blow that past. This is already five reps. Plenty of time on the clock. Sixth attempt is good for Novikov. Looking to put a stranglehold on the top spot in this event and vault himself up the overall standings, but we still have four men left after this. 15 seconds for Alexei Novikov. Here's attempt number eight. Ten seconds. And that yeah, yeah. will count seven good reps for Alexei Novikov at 275. So when we're in this position, what you'll see was a lot of guys dipping and trying to press straight out like so, okay? When what I would do is dip, punch, and then stand. So we have the double knee dip. Essentially, it's a single arm jerk. All right, so when you watch guys like uh, Lisi's and Novikov, they tend to have a little bit more of a narrow stance, right? And they dip down, they punch and drop underneath, catch it almost like a kettlebell windmill essentially, and then they stand up. So they're dropping underneath of that dumbbell and utilizing the double knee bend. So just from watching it, that was just something that I took away from a lot of those competitors that probably could have made up uh, points or not have lost points because a lot of them got it all the way out there and then just couldn't secure the lockout when all they had to do was punch it slightly more over their head and less away from their body, okay? So um, we're playing some of those clips so you guys can watch them obviously throughout this video. Uh, like I said, Novikov, absolute beast. Seven reps on circus dumbbell. You got Lisi's, uh, I think he had uh, four, three or four reps. Uh, but when you watch the guys that missed it, look at where they're pressing that dumbbell and how far away it's getting from their body uh, or they just don't have a good rack position. So check it out, some food for thought. Um, like I said, I'm just a minor league strongman competitor, uh, but this is an event that I'm passionate about and that I like. And I feel like if you guys are training at home, you can take some value and knowledge uh, from these tips and implement in your training. And the best thing you can do, set up your phone, right? Watch it in slow motion. Watch what's happening with your hips when you're bending your knees. Where are you pressing? And then make the corrections uh, necessary. But uh, I made that whole video on the circus dumbbell, building up from scratch. Click that video, watch it. Watch all the strongman playlist videos that we have because uh, we're really trying to get more into that market as it seems to be a rising market at this time. So subscribe to the channel. Like the video, stay in Lean Mean Strike Machine. Catch you guys next time. Peace.